Hey guys, this is Log of One. Back again for the fourth part to my ultimate guide on the KO Perko heist. If you haven't gone through the first three parts of my guide, then feel free to check them out. Links will be in the description below. Alright, so after you are done with your preps, you are ready for the finale. The main aim of this video will be to help you improve your time in the finale, attempt to get elite challenge every time regardless of approach you choose, and earn maximum amount of money while doing so, legitimately anyways. Now, there are so many approaches for this heist, because of RNG of secondary targets and points of interest, along with the fact, if you are playing this finale so low or not, that it was getting harder to divide in 2 to 3 categories. So instead of splitting the heist into multiple approaches, I have decided to split the heist into three time sections. Before entering the compound, when inside the compound, and exiting the compound. Alright. For first section of the heist, you need to travel from your infiltration point to the compound. And there are five unique ways to enter it. Drainage tunnel using cutting torch, side walls using grappling equipment, side gates using gate codes, and main gate using either supply truck or the explosive charges. Fun fact, you can get an elite challenge, even if you use explosive charges. But you have to make sure, that you weren't detected before using it. The elite challenge requirement for, do not get detected, does not include detections, that result from cutscenes. Same logic applies, if you do not buy weapons stash support crew for VLM approach. Another thing, I would like to mention is that you can enter directly inside the wall fences, by either the halo jump, or the long fin, or using the buffered ledge grab glitch. But the alchemist prep mission takes decently long, the long fin jumps are far too inconsistent to pull off every time, and the buffered ledge grab glitch requires proper timing and placement to make it remotely useful. From personal experience, these aren't the best ways to enter the compound area, but they are definitely fun to try. Moving on, if you plan to collect secondary targets before entering the compound, then I will recommend a few tips. Number 1, try to equip guard outfits as soon as you infiltrate the island. This will allow you to travel the island much easily. Number 2, take care of the guards who are patrolling near the sheds, before collecting the secondary targets, because they are able to see through the wooden cracks of the shed. They will get alerted, even if you have guard outfits equipped. Number 3, if you have guard outfits and find grappling equipment, then consider using it instead of finding the gate codes. This is because the gate codes are randomly dropped by the guards. And sometimes the first few guards may not drop the gate codes, and then you might have to go all around the outer sections of the compound, killing 9 guards to eventually find the gate codes. You can also use the drainage tunnel, but that takes a lot of time as well. Now, once inside the compound, you can take a couple of routes to reach El Rubio's office, as you can see in my gameplay. And if you have guard outfits equipped, then it will be easier, as most of the guards will ignore you, except the personal guards and the juggernaut. However, do not stand in front of them for more than a few seconds. Now, there are a couple ways to get the primary target. Either using the elevator from El Rubio's office, which requires 3 hacks in normal mode, and 4 hacks in hard mode difficulty heist. Or you can use the gates at the bottom level, which only require 1 hack in normal mode, and 2 hacks in hard mode. But, you need gate keys, which can be with any of the guards. However, after running this heist so many times, I have seen, that more often than not, one of the three personal guards will drop the keys. My guess is that these guards have been given a high drop rate for the gate keys. Moving on, a few tips, I would like to share when inside the compound. Number 1, if you plan to use the key cards, and if you hear the guards talking, then let them finish their dialogues, before taking them out, because this is probably a bug or a feature, which basically prevents one of the key cards from dropping, if the guards are killed mid-conversation. On the same note, you can ask your teammates to split the work, as most of the time, one of the key cards, will spawn in El Rubio's office. So one of the teammates, can go there first, while others search for it downstairs. Number 2, after you collect primary target, guards will respawn except the personal guards and juggernaut, so it is slightly better to collect secondary targets first, before collecting the primary target. Number 3, there is a hidden safe in El Rubio's office, that contains somewhere between 50 to 100,000. Number 4, juggernauts can be knocked from behind, and they will go down in one headshot, as they do not have any bulletproof helmets. Number 5, it is always faster to let the plasma cutter cool down to the minimum heat level, than to keep pushing it at the maximum heat level. Moving on to the last section, when we exit the compound. 
Now if you have a full bag of secondary targets, then you can just take the Manchus scout and jump off the cliff. You just keep swimming and eventually the message, Escape KO Perico, will disappear, indicating that your heist is complete. But if you have not grabbed secondary targets till now, then it will get a bit harder, because after exiting the main checkpoint for the compound, El Rubio's helicopter will start searching for you. Very similar to the search helicopter in the Gather Intel mission. Here, I can suggest a few tips for this section. Number 1, if you have the Conspirator weapon loadout, you can place sticky bombs on the Valkyrie before leaving the compound exterior. And if it comes near you then you can blow it up. Doing so will not break your stealth. Number 2, there is a boat that keeps driving outside the compound, so if you see one then you can use that as well to escape. Just shoot the driver of the dinghy and take it. Number 3, if you die during the escape, then just quit the heist by going into creator and in an invite only lobby. As every time you or your team dies, the value of secondary targets reduces, because once you quick restart, the value of your bag will be the one that was recorded at the time of your death. More the bag is shot, more the value of bag reduces. This might sound counterproductive, but I am trying to be as realistic as possible. Everyone makes mistakes, and it is always possible to get detected in any of the sections of this heist. Quick restarting will not only void your lead challenge, but also possibly reduce your secondary target loot value. On the contrary, in your first few heists, I will recommend that you should quick restart as you will probably make a lot more mistakes. At the end there is a learning curve for this heist. Once you run it often, you will be a heist expert yourself. Just look at me. My first heist took me over 7 hours to complete. No joke. Finale itself took about 2 hours. And now I have a personal best time of 32 minutes in speedrunning this heist. If you guys want, I can even make another part to this guide which includes all the speedrunning tricks for both console and PC. And I will throw in some other tricks I might have missed in the previous parts of this guide. So feel free to share it in the comments below. The scope out mission takes somewhere between 7 to 15 minutes, based on RNG and your personal strategy for the heist. The prep missions can also vary a lot, and can take about 20 to 35 minutes based on RNG and the approach vehicle chosen. And the finale can take somewhere around 8 to 13 minutes, once you get a hang of things. And by the way, all these numbers are including load times and everything. So, in a nutshell, you can be completing this heist, somewhere between 35 minutes to roughly an hour. I am aware that this theoretical duration of the heist varies a lot. But that variation mostly stems from the randomness of this heist and your approach. And since, this is your heist, you guys will determine, what method is fastest for you. But, if you guys feel bored of repeating the same approach over and over, you can just try other ones, like the Velen, or the Alchemist, or even the Stealth Annihilator. This heist has a lot of possibilities. Not just in terms of approach vehicles, but also the points of interest, secondary targets, and whether or not, you are playing this heist solo, or with friends. Alright guys. Making this was a lot harder than I thought. It was a real grind, if I must say in GTA terms. It took me over a month of collecting and editing clips to make this series. I hope everyone liked it. I had fun making it, and I tried my best to be as concise and comprehensive as possible, to make sure I covered all the important details thoroughly. And I will see you guys later.